this week. Uh oh. I lost everybody. Okay, Ellen. Welcome to the Cooking Without Looking TV Show 2023 Holiday Edition. I'm Alan Preston. Hi, Alan Preston and everybody out in our audience. I'm Annette Watkins. And you know what, Alan? I don't know. Is it just me or did 2023 whiz by? Wow, it did seem to go rather quickly, especially the last few months. Seems like once we hit Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, just kind of all sneak in right behind each other. Yes, it did that. I huh? went right over your head, Alan. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, there's no sneaking in what's going on today because we have a great show for you today. We have Tara Coyne, who will be preparing her ginger peach cobbler. It's going to be good. Then we have George Wurzel, and George is going to do something that nobody's ever done before. He's going to prepare his easy two ingredient, two, with his handmade biscuit cutter. Whoa, it sounds dangerous. Alan? And we have guest tips from Sylvia Stinson Perez, who has a wonderful announcement to share. Can't she wait. Does. All right, a wonderful announcement. Well, I just wanted to remind you guys, you're probably sick of hearing this, but all of us on the cooking show and even our guests are either blind or visually impaired. But don't feel sorry for us because we're doing great. Alan? Well, so let's get cooking on the Cooking Without Looking TV show 2023 holiday edition. This is one of our favorites. It's so much fun because we get to be silly and enjoy and think about what's going to happen in the future and all the gifts and the family and friends. But today we're going to concentrate on our wonderful guest. Her name is Tara, Tara Coyne, as I mentioned earlier, and um, she is going to make her um, peach ginger cobbler. But listen to this. She is a trained pastry chef. That's very impressive. Tara, you have appeared on our podcast before through our Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. And yes, we'll tell you. Okay. Yeah, that's wonderful. You were telling your story to everybody. But for those people who are here today for the first time and haven't heard about your story, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? So my name is Tara Coyne. Um, I was born in New York, but I was raised in Georgia because that's where my mom's family migrated to. Um, uh, 28, I, when I was 28, I moved to Minnesota to go to a blind school because I was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa when I was 21, um, right out of culinary school. Yay, winning the lottery. Anyways. All right. <laughs> so I wanted to be prepared for when I do go completely blind because it manifests so differently um, in everybody. So they think both my parents had the recessive gene and I have retinitis pigmentosa, but nobody else in my family has the has the gene. So yeah, you the lucky one. Yeah, you get the you're the lucky one that got the gene. But hey girl, you're you're handling it great. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. I want you to go ahead and start telling us about your recipe, why you picked this one. Is it a family pass, on, pass along recipe? And show us how you're going to prepare your peach cum cumbler, not crumbler. <laughs> crumble. I know, right? It's just peach crumbler. I'm having a hard time with words today. But anyway. That's, that's okay. That's okay. Take it, yeah, thank you. Take it away and just tell us whatever you want to tell us about it. So this is a ginger peach crumble and, you know, it does kind of taste like a cobbler is what my friend said when I gave it to them. So I picked this one because I have gastroparesis, which is an intestinal disorder um, where my food just sits in my stomach for so long and I have to eat a very low fat and low fiber diet. So this doesn't have that much fat in it and doesn't have a whole lot of fiber in it. So it's actually a low fat dessert, even though it tastes really good it's you know doesn't have that many calories yeah that's perfect i'm definitely going to try that one you know because if it tastes good and it doesn't have a lot of fat that's what a lot of people are looking for so go ahead and get yeah. started all right 
So I don't use oats in this, I use cookies. And that's that's what makes it gastroparesis friendly. So I'm just gonna turn the oven, not oven, the stove on. And I have a skillet on the stove top, which I'm just gonna feel the circumference to make sure that it's centered correctly. What kind of cookies are you using? Okay. Already I'm, using I'm using uh, ginger snaps and they're oh. gluten-free also. So you could make this recipe gluten-free, but I can still tolerate the gluten, but that, that's just the favorite ginger snap that I like, it's gluten-free. Where do you so, find uh, that, Kara? Where is where do you buy that? I found it at a Whole Foods store, which is Lund's and Byerly here. But you could probably find it anywhere. Um, I also am using frozen peaches today, which are organic and they're already peeled and cut for me. So, you know, that's nice. an easy cheat. You can use you fresh, but I'm mm -hmm. using frozen today. It looked like you dumped the entire bag or oh, two bags of those yep, in there. Do bags. you know the contents yep. of the bags? I'm sorry, what? Do you know the contents of the bags? I mean, the, the amount that's in there, is, is that kind of like your measuring stick? 10.3, 10 point something ounces. Um, Instacart is fabulous by actually reading it to you and having all the um, the the weight, the net weight on it. So the recipe is about three to four pounds of um, peeled and pitted fresh peaches, or you can use um, frozen, like about two to three bags of frozen peaches. Okay. Or you, you can use a bag as a measuring device. Yep, I okay. did. So I have already measured out my lemon juice, which was two tablespoons of lemon juice. I find it easier to pre-measure either over the sink or over an extra, you know, vessel. So I'm just going to pour that in. And then I am adding where did it go? a fourth of a cup of brown sugar that I pre-measured and a fourth of a teaspoon of the allspice that goes in here also in this little ramekin. You just dump that in and we're going to set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And it's gonna cook for about five minutes. And you'll start to hear it sizzle because I have the heat on medium high, high heat. Mm -hmm. You see very That's comfortable. Electric. What? So gas or electric? Uh, I have electric, but I like gas better because it cooks cleaner. Uh, but we moved we moved into this townhouse and unfortunately it did not have gas, but it's it's still nice. Yeah, yeah. This I'm is Sylvia and I have a I have a quick question. Were the ginger snaps crumbled or just as whole cookies? So they're whole cookies, but I okay. pre crumbled them. You did crumble them. Okay, that I was did my question. Them. Yes. yes. So I, have, I have them in a in a bowl and they're already pre crumbled. Did you have to use a mallet or with it you could do it with your hands? Because they get so pretty can, hard. It does. So I used a food okay. processor, but you could you could use whatever you have. You don't have a food processor. You could have the is showing in the photo description. Question about the animals. Will no, we answer? Did you Tara? put some oil in that pan first? Yes. I did. I put some uh, cooking spray. So there's cooking you, spray. Okay. You could use butter, but I use cooking spray because it's less fat for me. But if you want to use butter, you can use butter. Tara, can you swap out any fruit that you'd like just for a change? So I find it hard sometimes to find peaches, but can you use something else? Yeah, because it's it's winter here right now, so I was able to find some frozen peaches. But if you can't find your fresh or frozen, you could use blueberries, you could use strawberries. I have to be careful about the the berries I eat because of the seeds and the the skin on them. So I'm using the peaches, but of course you could swap your fruit. Right. Right. Oh wow. Well, you're very comfortable in the kitchen. That pastry chef school really paid off. <laughs> How long was that? How long was um, your school? Uh, it was about two years, but wow. it was a year-round school. So it was more like, hmm, technically it was like a three-year school, but I went for two years and I was, I've was i always been comfortable. I grew up cooking since like the age of five. 
cooking and more of like middle school, high school, I started um, kind of baking more. So I like baking more. I'll cook, but I love to bake more. What is your favorite thing to bake besides the peach cobbler crumble? Um, that's good. <laughs> I, I'll bake cookies, cakes, um, pies. I don't really care to decorate. I know how to do it. I just choose not to. Right. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so that's that's cooking. So in a food processor, while it's cooking, I've already pre-measured the, um, the flour, which was a fourth of a cup of flour and plus two tablespoons. Um, two tablespoons of brown sugar, which I'm going to measure right now. I'm just gonna stick my measuring spoon in my bag and kind of pat it down with my other hand to make sure that it's packed because you always wanna pack brown sugar because brown sugar is a wet ingredient. I'm using dark brown because I like the molasses content of the darker brown, but you can use light brown. You could also, if you're diabetic, use uh, the, I think it's Splenda brown sugar. If you're diabetic, you could use that. Or Stevia, yeah. Or Stevia. Yeah, it's, I'm glad you mentioned that about the molasses, because some people don't know that's what brown sugar has, the molasses in it. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it goes good with the ginger, right? I mean, it does. It complements and I'm it. measuring a fourth of a teaspoon of nutmeg that's gonna go in the food processor. Ah, this is so good for the holidays. I'm excited. Yep. And I have already measured two tablespoons of cold butter in the um, food processor as well. Oh, because I turned the wrong burner on. Haha. <laughs> Just kidding. Helps to turn the right burner on. That is why it's not sizzling. Okay, but you won't use butter to fry it, but you'll use it in the in the mix. Is that right? So yeah, okay. so it's only two tablespoons, so it's very little. Fat it is in there. Little. The cookies have about three grams of fat in there, so that's why there's only about five grams of uh, fat per serving. Okay. How many but, grams do you have a day of fat? Uh, about 50. I can have about 50 grams of fat a day. Alexa, that's pretty good. That's pretty good because I know a lot of people that follow a vegan diet, they follow whole food plant-based and they don't get more than 30 a day, 30 um, fat. Yeah, I think it differs for everybody. So I don't follow a vegan one. I follow a gastroparesis diet. So sure. I don't need a whole lot of fat. I don't need a whole lot of fiber. I can only eat certain vegetables, certain fruits um, because it just sits in my stomach and any more than like 50 grams of fat, I get really sick. Oh, poor baby. We don't want that. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to turn the food processor on. So you're going to hear a loud noise. And you just Out. want to, you just want to um, use the food processor till it's kind of blended. Oops. And my power mask went off. Okay. Sorry. Electricity problems. That's fine. So I'm going to put my hand in to feel if it's crumbly which it is kind of like pea-sized crumb, crumb topping. And then I'm going to put the grand, oh, not grand crackers, the uh, ginger snaps that I have already pre-ground into the food processor. There we go, now I hear it. Now I hear it's cooking. And then I'm just gonna pulse that also till it just comes together. <laughs> all right, and that's all together. So that's our topping that we're going to put on top of the fruit mixture once it's done cooking. So it's almost, I can hear that it's starting to cook and get all nice and... Oh, I can imagine what your kitchen's starting to smell like, right? I'm starting to be able to smell the peaches and the um, allspice and the brown sugar. And I've already preheated my oven to 400 degrees. It's always key to preheat your oven because when you're baking, um, if it's it's crucial to preheat your oven because if it's not the correct temperature, then it's not going to turn out correctly. Okay, 400 degrees. 
also helps keep the house warm in Minnesota too. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Although it's been a very mild uh, winter, it's only snow maybe like two or three times. Um, but it's forecasted to snow uh, tomorrow sometime. I don't know, Tara. Two or three times sounds like a lot. It's only December. Um, for for me, yes, because I'm from Georgia, and when I first moved here, I was like, "Oh my goodness, I don't know about this." But it's very accessible in Minnesota, and there was a lot of job opportunities, so that's why I stayed. Because I actually, before the pandemic, worked at Target Center, um, for the NBA basketball team. It was a prep cook, so the smallest um that we cooked for was like hmm. 5,000, and then the largest crowd was like 20,000. Wow, that wow. is some big news. That sounds yeah. exciting. It was, it was really exciting. And the silly pandemic kind of squashed that because if you don't have fans and you don't work, but you know, everything's back up. So maybe I might go back once I'm done figuring out my gastroparesis situation. Yeah, I wish you the best with that. I, I, I think you will. I know you'll get something positive will come out of that. Yeah. So I can hear the, the bubbles are more, um, you can kind of hear that the, the bubbles have started getting louder. So I know that this is almost done, even though I didn't set another timer. I can tell that this is almost done because I can feel in the texture that the syrup is nice and bubbly. So I'm gonna turn my burner off and I'm going to grab my handle with my left hand because I'm left-handed and I have a, I have a, eight or nine inch round cake pan but you can use a pie tin um whichever if you want as long as it's eight or nine inches so i'm going to take the pan and i have it on top of a cookie sheet just in case i accidentally spill but i'm holding the pan in my left hand i'm going to take my right hand to find where my pan is where the center is so i've stuck my hand in the center now i'm going to take it away because i know where the center is and i'm going to pour straight into the center of the pan Okay, you're very good with description, Tara. Have you have you taught a lot of people before? Um, uh, I I don't really count as to how many I've taught, but I taught at Blind Incorporated for like one year um, for their summer program in 2019, and then after the pandemic, well, actually during the pandemic, because I don't sit very well still. I like to be doing things. Right. So right now, I'm just scraping out the excess from the pan using kind of like the grid method from left to right all the way down. What method is that? Uh, I use it's called the grid method. So you go from oh. left to right, from top oh. to bottom, kind of in your pan to make sure you got all the nice money bits. Nice, nice. So now I'm just going to take my kind of like a rubber spatula and kind of make sure that it's evenly distributed mm -hmm. and and I will bring it closer so people can see because I don't know if you can see over here. So oh. now that that is done, I'm going to take this the food processor that we've made with our crumb part or crumble and we're going to I'm going to feel with my hand where the pan is. It is a little warm, but I'm used to it. So you can wait for it to cool down or stick it in the fridge for, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes for it to cool so you can touch it. Um, but I'm finding where the, the circle is and then I'm just gonna take globs of crumble and just sprinkle it all around. Oh my God, I'm serious. My mouth is watering. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Right, Alan? How are you feeling about this? Oh my God, I wish we had smell o vision Exactly. <laughs> Could only imagine, right? Why, even my guide dog, Bell, made a little comment about that. You think it smells good too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do have a dog. He's not a guide dog. He's kind of a rescue, but I use him as my hearing dog because I can't hear that well sometimes. But um, he he knows the rule. He's not allowed to be in the kitchen, but his feet are past the carpet because his feet are too long. So those are the only things allowed in the kitchen. So he, he's sitting there. Uh -huh. Good for he's you. <laughs> that is funny. He's pushing well, a little. Among other things, uh, being a trained guide dog and my trusted guide, she also helps me keep my kitchen floor clean. <laughs> she knows to stay out of my way, too. Uh-huh. 
They learn. He's your little Hoover, huh? She uh, is. Does a great job, too. Well, down here in Florida, we have bug issues if you don't keep things clean. And I don't always see when I drop little crumbs of things. Right. That's perfect. She's really supposed to have human food. And I wouldn't intentionally give it to her, but she does a great job with stuff that I don't get, you know, the stuff I miss. Exactly. And then once, you, once you've kind of used the grid method again, kind of feeling that you put it all around, I just dump the rest of it in the center and I'm kind of going to brush it to the side to also make sure that that's even as well. And then I'm going to kind of just pat it down lightly. So it's kind of a little pat because, you know, the brown sugar is in there. And it's okay if you don't get it all the way to the edges because, you know, sometimes that looks a little rustic or you can kind of make a little hole in the center just to make it look rustic as well. Whatever whatever you want to do, but that's how I've done it is just pat it down. That's pretty cool, yeah. I like the idea of working over a tray. I always do that too. Yes, it makes, it makes clean up a lot easier. And also, if it spills over in the oven, you don't have to clean the whole oven. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm opening my oven. I'm going to stick it in the oven for 20 minutes. Ooh. Just 20. That's a nice quick dessert. Alexa, set a time for 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Excellent. And because, you know, the kitchen fairies made one earlier, I have one. Oh, the of TV. You already have one made. Look at that. Oh, very pretty. Oh. And then I have a plate that I'm going to put it on. Ugh. I'm very curious if it stays together like a pie or does it crumble? <laughs> I'm it's curious to like see this cobbler. part of it too. It's it's more it's more like a cobbler when I when I took when I kind of scooped it out. It did kind of hold its shape a little bit, but. Um, I had to coax it just a little also. So mm. I just kind of, you can cut into it or I'm kind of digging a little bit around with kind of like a spoon to make it like a shovel. And I'm scooping yeah. under and I'm holding it on top with my hand. Oops. And I'm just kind of putting it on the plate. Okay. And then mm -hmm. I have not that dear cooking cream. Or, oops, no, that's okay. Now, I thought for sure you were going to loosen it around the edge and flip it over on the plate. I mean, you could if you want to show that 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 reindeer trick, but I don't do that. Okay. It's meant to stay in the pan. So, I mean, you could if you want to, but it's more like um, that's that's the topping and that's the finished Oh, part. it's supposed to be in the pan. Yeah. Okay. Mm, that looks wonderful. And that's an individual serving. I'm not seeing how big that is, but so I put yes, I put one individual serving on the plate with a little dollop of non-fat dairy whipping cream or whatever you like to use if you want to use the whole fat one, but I have to watch my my uh fat intake. So right. I am using non-fat. Can you hold it up a little bit to the camera? Just angle it. Yeah, a little, little bit higher, honey. A little bit higher. And to your right, to your no, to your left. I the mean, to your right. left. <laughs> yeah. Now tip it a little bit more without it having fallen off the plate. <laughs> yeah. You can move your hand. Just move your oh, hand. Oh my god. That looks perfect. That looks delicious. Very good. I could smell. Right. Does anybody I have see a little bit of ice cream on there? Oh yeah. Anybody? Oh, my golly. Does anybody have any questions in our audience or Sylvia or Alan, anybody? I have a quick question. This is Sylvia. So, Tara, fabulous job. I mean, you clearly, like, have all the techniques down. So I love that you provided all those great, the grid pattern and how to find the center of the pan. I actually hadn't thought of that. So that's cool. Um. Was there ginger snaps in the peach mixture from the beginning or no? Did I misunderstand no. that? Okay. No. Okay. So that was, that was, that goes in the, the crumb. Yeah, in the crumb so instead of oats, I substitute the, the, um, the ginger snaps because no, I can't. Fabulous. I, I mean, and what a difference the taste is like, it creates that whole special taste. I love it. Mm -hmm. And it's like a Christmassy taste because of the ginger mm -hmm. snap. There's all different flavors in the snap too. So you don't really have to add 
the nutmeg and allspice, I just think it brings out more of the seasonings in the cookie. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Sounds wonderful. Anybody else? Okay, well, Tara, thank you so much, so, so much for that. And to our audience who wants to know more about Tara, you can go back and listen to her podcast on the Cooking Without Looking channel, and you can listen there. Alan? Well, now we welcome back an old friend of our TV show who first appeared here when we were on PBS in South Florida. Remember those <laughs> days, Annette? I love oh, that. Yeah. That fun. Welcome, George Wurzel. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Ned. Good to Thank see you me. again. Been a long time. It's been like 20 some years, my friend. My golly. That's a I'd long... say you don't look a day older, but I really can't see you up there on the screen. So you don't look a day <laughs> older to me. I, I can, I'm up for the fact that I don't look one day older. And now it's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was. I, I've done pretty much the same thing most of my life. I've been somehow related in the woodworking business. But it's interesting listening to our past guest there, um, Tara, was the fact that uh, her and I have so many similarities. I um, I also have retinitis pigmentosis. And um, I, although I lost all my vision by the time I was 20 years old, um, but I spent also spent a five-year stint in a high-end bakery making baked goods and working in a bakery uh, for a while in my life. So... And I also lived in Minnesota, and I also worked for Blind Ink for a while. So um, I don't know if she's following me around or I just went ahead of her. I'm not sure which it was. But um, I'm going to make some uh, biscuits for you today. Uh, but I couldn't make biscuits unless I had a biscuit cutter. So I'm in the woodworking business. And um, so I'm going to talk to you just a little bit about my biscuit cutters here before I get started. In front of me here, I have a three by three piece of curly maple, comes out of the furniture industry. These are leg stocks for furniture companies to make legs with for their for tables and different things. And this particular piece has a huge amount of what they call curly maple in it. If you run your finger up and down this piece of wood, it's amazing. You can actually feel the curl in the wood uh, with your fingers. It, it's pretty amazing. It's what's on the backs of fancy violins uh, fiddles. You hear people talking about fiddle back, you know, violins and things. So I start off with that big stick, then I take them to a saw and I run them through and I make them into octagon pieces. And then I take them to another saw and I cut them into three inch chunks. And that's the one for my large biscuit cutters. Here's one that's made for a two inch biscuit cutter, a little smaller biscuit cutter. And um, they're all turned on the lathe after they get cut up. And Due to the marvels of magic here, we're able to show you. Uh, here's one of the, the, the two inch, the uh, two and three quarter inch larger biscuit cutters. Here's an also one of those, but these we've taken the time. I have a CNC computer downstairs in my wood shop and we've carved a honeybee in the top of it. And you can even feel the little, the little hexagons around where the honeybee is sitting on top of his honeycomb. So uh, these are the, the biscuit cutters that we sell in our store, Ginkgo Gallery for people to come by to make their own biscuits. We're making two ingredient biscuits today. White lily, self-rising flour is our, is our flour of choice here in, here in this part of the country. Um, so I have a, a bowl with a, a nice wooden spoon, also made out of curly maple. And I made so that yourself the, too? Pardon? You made that yourself too, right? No, I mean, it's my spoon. So um, I got a, I, I reached in my bag of white lily flour here, and I'm using um, a, around two cups of flour. Uh, it's just it, I just brushed it off. Um, this is an interesting old um, measuring cup I'm using. You can pick them up at secondhand stores and and flea markets and and antique stores and that. This is an old aluminum um, cup that the lines are embossed on the inside and the outside of the cup both. So you can run your finger down inside this cup and you can feel, and this is a two cup, so you got, you know, half a cup, you know, one cup, you know, one and a half cups and two cups to the top. And you can find these in different sizes. They're really nice if you can't see because the, the silly Pyrex ones aren't worth anything to us because the, the lines are not possible for us to, to, uh, to see them. 
So you, um, this, this is really simple in the fact that you, you just, I just dumped that the yeah. two cups of flour in this, in this um, Got a cookie bowl sugar. here. And then I grabbed some heavy whipping cream and I just randomly dumped heavy whipping cream into, into my flour mixture. And I was talking and not paying as much attention as I should have. What you're looking to do is incorporate this flour and your heavy whipping cream into a ball in this in the um, in this bowl here. And what you're looking for is you want it to just start coming together. You want it to be um, not dry, not wet. You want it to be just right. You um, you want it to be so it'll come together in a nice ball. And it's going to require just, I think I got to throw a little bit. I think I got carried away with my, with my heavy whipping cream here. You kind of have a feel for when that's the right texture. What you want to do is when you stick your finger in there, it, it, it should not stick to your finger, but it also shouldn't be dry. Okay. So I'm going to put just another little quarter cup or less of, of flour in here. Got just a little carried away with my, what I try to do is put the flour in and add the the um, half. I mean the heavy whipping cream slowly so that you. Um, but there's always a correction for a little error like that. I see. When you only have two ingredients, it's you know you just keep working it until you get it pretty easy. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So now I got it working around in here real nice. It's coming up into a real nice ball. The outside of it is just a little bit sticks to your finger just the tiniest bit, but not too much. Okay, so there's a good shot for you, I think, of the of the dough inside the bowl there, and you can see it comes together in a nice ball. Okay, and then I, I'm working on a pastry pastry board here, and I have just a little bit of I have just a little bit of uh, flour on the pastry board, um, so that it won't stick to the stick to the sheet. Okay, so I have my, my ball out here in the middle. Now I'm, I'm just taking my hand and you don't want to knead this. You need bread, you don't need these kinds of things. I'm patting this out until it's about a half inch thick, which is just a little bit more than what we got right now. And Any I kinda, particular shape uh, or just- um, I, mean, I kind, of, kind, of been, kind of making a, 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 a very poor rectangle out of it. Um, Okay, so I've got it padded out to about a half inch thick. Now I'm taking and I'm taking one edge and I'm rolling it over towards the camera on top. There we go. Now I'm patting it out again. I'm going to do this pat, 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 pat it right back down again. Could you do that with a rolling pin, or is it best you to could, do it? By you hand could hand do hand. it with a you could do it with a rolling pin. But then you got one more thing you got to clean. I mean, this is two ingredients, so we're trying to keep all the utensils real simple too. We got two ingredients. We got one one measuring bowl, one measuring cup. Okay, so now I'm folding it back over on itself again. Made it long, ended up with a long rectangle out of it. Patting it out again. Pat, pat, pat. Don't want to need it, just want to pat it out. Okay, there was. Okay, this is number three times. Holding it back over onto itself. I'm curious, is your uh, prep board, uh, cutting board, is that a is that a wooden board? This happens to be a, a a board that you probably got as a gift if you did a Tupperware if you did a Tupperware party back in the '60s. This is one that's got some recipes written on it. It was made by Tupperware. It also has the circles on it for for um, uh, pie crust for the different size pie crust eight inch six inch eight inch ten inch. No, uh, I can't see those. Okay, so there's my okay. So this is my fourth time. Okay, patting it all out. I'm gonna pat it back down to a to a half inch. Um, lots of times. Um, what we do most of the time, and we didn't this time just because we were 
hanging around getting all this working uh, for the show and everything. Well, I will take a preheat. I'm going to bake these in a cast iron, cast iron skillet. There's no reason to put anything on the skillet. There's enough, there's enough uh, stuff in the in the dough, uh, enough fats in that heavy whipping cream. Okay, so I pat me back down to my half inch. Okay, so then I have a ramekin here, a little ramekin that I have my wooden biscuit cutter sitting in, and you put your biscuit cutter in the ramekin. Okay. And with so you get a little flour on the bottom edge of it, and um, and you cut, start cutting your biscuits. There's two biscuits, and there's three biscuits, and there is four biscuits. The correct thickness is important. There's five biscuits. <laughs> And, and the, the dough is about a half inch thick um, that you patted it out to. Six biscuits. Seven biscuits. I might get eight out of here, out of this corner right over here. You're doing all this by feel? Yeah, absolutely. That's the only thing I got. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. So then I have a. I like it. I have a little, very low profile um, uh, device for getting pie out of a out of a cake pan, out of a pie pan. It's real low profile. I like it because it's you. You really know where you're at when if you were working this into a hot pan, it would be really easy to get the. You could feel with the point of it and get your biscuit exactly where you want it. Okay. So, what about getting your fingers burnt? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And you can do them on you can do these on a sheet tray as well. You don't have to do them in a cast iron pan. I like I like the cast iron pan because it, it gives a nice crunch to the bottom of the biscuits. Mm, sounds yummy. And and when you put them in, you want them to be really good friends. You want to you want their shoulders to bump when you um when you put them in the pan here, so that um, not, being, not being cooperative, there we go. Um, it, it helps them raise a lot better when their shoulders bump. They're, they're happier. Okay. Kind of like riding on the city bus, you know, you gotta be <laughs> friends with your neighbor, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now I'm curious. There's probably a little bit of dough left over there. Am I right? So the dough that's left the over. The dough that's left over. I'm going to take and I'm going to rework that dough. I'm going to put it back together. And um, that pat it back out again. Get one more in this pan, and I have one more cut. There. Well, be cooperative. That one kind of stuck to its neighbor. That one was really trying to. Okay. So. Okay. So here's a shot. I do believe that. Does that give you a good shot of them there? There they are. Uh, all yes, I think I think that is a good shot of it. I have a big thirty-five inch monitor here. If I get my nose a couple inches away, I can sort of see. So I'm throwing those in the oven, and they take. Um, hey Alexa, set a alarm for fourteen minutes. Good afternoon, Joy. Fourteen minute alarm set for three fifty-two p.m. Hear your alarm sounds. If you need a few more minutes, she said that she has my alarm set. So I gathered my dough back together, and I patted it out, folded it over, and there was no more room in that pan for it, so we'll have to wait for those to come out and do it again. You can also take, when you're making these, you could take and sprinkle uh, as you're folding them out and laying them over, folding them out, laying them over. You can take and sprinkle them with uh, cheddar cheese. You could sprinkle them with Parmesan cheese. You could put herbs in them. You could um, put cinnamon sugar on them. 
you know, whatever you like. Or you can just have them plain like they are, and when they come out of the oven, you can put nice local yeah, honey. Stuff in. There. Yeah, that sounds really good. I like the idea of putting a little cheese in with them. Yeah. <laughs> so my 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 place here. I, I live in an old industrial building in Greenville, Tennessee. We took this old building, and my dream when I was 19 years old, I wanted a, a place that I could live, a place that I could have a, a shop, and a place that I could have a, a gallery to sell my stuff out of. So in this building, I have exactly that. We've dedicated about 1,000 square feet of it to living space. We have about 200 square feet of it dedicated to gallery right now. And, and the biggest part of the building, over 2,000 square foot of the building, is dedicated to my workshop. So wow. um, my gallery... My gallery has all kinds of beautiful plates and bowls and uh, ice cream scoops and biscuit cutters and um, you name it, anything that's made out of wood. I have a line of uh, occasional furniture that I build that's made out of wood and glass. Uh, it's Ginkgo Gallery Greenville. Or if you really want to know more about me than you ever wanted to know, if you go to Facebook and you look up George the Subaru Guy, you will find everything you, that is about my shop. I was in a Subaru ad, car ad, about five years ago. And um, everybody got to know me as George the Subaru guy. If you'd have told me you could do one thing on TV and everybody in the country as you walked around and watched you and say, are you the guy in the ad? I would have told you you were crazy. No one pays attention to ads. But I guess when you're as unique looking as I am, I guess people pay attention. Can I answer any questions for anybody? Yeah, how did you get into the wood shopping? How do you do that when you're when you're blind? I mean, it's amazing. That's all I've ever done all my life. I started off at a school for the blind, Michigan School for the Blind. Uh, mm -hmm. Took every machine shop, wood shop, automobile class they had, and so started there. And then, interestingly enough, when I graduated from high school, I wanted to go to a cabinet building school, and they wouldn't let me go because I was blind. So I just started doing it on my own. Uh, I am impressed, George. You know, I'm an old high school shop teacher, and uh, I had a lot of those same issues with you can't do that because you're a blind person. Yeah, sure you can. You just have to figure out how. Yeah, here here in my local town or local area, we built a 28 foot bar for a uh, tap room last summer. The summer before that, we built an 18 foot long bar. Right next to my building here, there's another little bar we built them. Um, two different small bars in there. We built a seven foot diameter wooden door for a hobbit house, a round door for a hobbit house, weighed 300 pounds. We built that last summer. Wow. So I, I am a, I am a hardcore woodworker. I, I've been on, How did you get into the biscuit making and are you selling them online at least? Selling tons of them online. I have made thousands of the biscuit cutters. Sharon, my partner in crime, she is, she is the one responsible for us making biscuit cutters. When COVID came along um, a couple of years ago, there wasn't anybody coming in our little gallery. We hadn't seen a customer in months. And she says, we need to do something. She says, we live in the South now. We should be making biscuit cutters because everybody down here eats biscuits. And she had an old antique biscuit cutter that her girlfriend had given her uh, a long time ago. So she went and dug it out and handed it to me and said, you can make me one of these. And I took, went downstairs and made her a biscuit cutter. And she put it up on our Facebook page. And at the end of the week, we'd sold like 30 of them. And then somebody put it on the White Lily Facebook page that are pretty wooden biscuit cutters. And at the end of another week, we had another order for, you know, 50 biscuit cutters. And we've yeah. been making them for the last, you know, three years now, just pretty much nonstop. We make, I make them almost every week. I make some. That is amazing. What a wonderful story. Wow. You're such an inspiration. I mean, where have you been hiding? Well, they said you were on the show like many years ago, but I don't remember you on the show. So I apologize, but you're a real I made, inspiration. I made an amazing five mushroom soup when I was on your show. I had five different kinds of mushrooms cooked in five different kinds of cooking oils cooked with five different kinds of seasonings. Oh, my. Why? That's amazing. That's amazing. And so two two ingredient biscuits. So you use the flour from the company that well, I guess they, they sponsor you a little bit. I wish they did. They don't as much. Uh, I'll tell you, there's one of the lathe manufacturers here in the United States, Rikon. They sponsor me big time. They they, you know, give me give me stuff. And I, I go work. I go work all the big uh, woodworking shows. And I am I am their booth babe. I, uh, I'm the person in the booth that you talk to when you, about your lathe. Okay, so there. I didn't you know, go there. Look like. 
we due to do taking keys from Martha Stewart, we had some already made here for you to look at. Mm -hmm. I wish you were here to have some. They'd be oh, really good. They smell that. great. I'd love to taste one. <laughs> George, this it's is Sylvia. <laughs> and and I have um I remember several years ago I had a, a client in my independent living skills class. He did a two ingredient biscuits and he used buttermilk and the self rising flour. And I can tell y'all that it's fat. You just don't think you're like two ingredients. How's that going to turn out? So I can tell y'all they're fabulous. <laughs> we make them all the time. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a regular thing in our house. Yeah. So, I love so the fun. cutters. I'm going to go and look for that online. It, yeah, it, we already sent the recipe, and and it, uh, I can get a guess. You can post that in the show notes. Sure. So it's if we all, want to buy, the George is already posted. It's on our website at okay. www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. It's been there a couple of days. Excellent. So if we want to buy the biscuits as well, George, we can go on um, <laughs> the website. Oh, yes, I don't think you, you can buy, buy, buy the biscuits. The, buy my <laughs> you need to start baking your biscuits and selling them. No, you can send them out. Biscuit cutters are the regular ones are $35 each plus shipping. And then the ones with the pretty honeybee carved on top of them are 35, I mean, are $40 each. She's trying to buy your biscuits, George, not the biscuit cutter. She I, wants I, the biscuits I, I, I too. <laughs> People ship all kinds of things, George. You have to ship those biscuits. <laughs> Could ship the biscuits. I'll do anything for the money. <laughs> Start shipping the biscuit. Go down Shark Tank. There you go. <laughs> there You're you amazing. Go. I am really impressed, George. Thank you so much. It was great having you once again. And uh, a little catching up, too. Um, Sylvia, I got a question. Can you tell us about this wonderful news? <laughs> well... I am excited, honored, privileged to say that I am going to be the next executive director, CEO of Visions Services for the Blind in New York City. Wow. wow. That's fantastic. That's so wonderful. <laughs> what are you going to do exactly, though? Explain. <laughs> well, I'm going to be the CEO, so I'm going to do whatever all do the employee, whatever the employees, exactly. board of directors, volunteers, clients tell me to do. That's what I'm going to do. Right. And then you'll tell everybody what to do. Well, yeah. mostly they'll tell me what to do. That's usually how the CEO <laughs> job works. Somebody tells you what they need done and you just go do it. Oh, <laughs> you make sure they it. have what they need to do to do their job. I Aww. sure hope that one of the things that you plan on doing is coming back and being on our show every month. I, I don't know that I can come every month, but I will try to be visiting and we will definitely have to have some of the staff and maybe clients from there appear on the show sometime. And, yeah. and you can hire me to teach your clients as well. I teach woodworking all the time. I love what you know I was gonna tell you and Tara I I spent a couple days at Blind Inc and saw the the whole woodworking thing and everything and my dad was a woodworker and um so I love that you do that and um make all those cool things it's it I love it I built I built a big woodworking operation for San Francisco Lighthouse for the Blind and oh. two weeks after so after we were done building the whole thing, the fires came through and burned off our house. Oh, oh no. yes. Darn, yeah. Wow, what a disappointment. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Wow. So anything else? Um, I'm just going to say now that the script tells me to say it is... <laughs> so as we end today, I hate to end it, but it's been so much fun. I want to thank you, Tara and George and Sylvia. Congratulations again. And thank you all of you for joining us on Cooking Without Looking show. So also a special thanks to Blind United who has helped support us over these months. So thank you. Um, if you would like today's recipe as well as previous re recipes, please go to our website, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. Alan? 
And if you would like to enjoy today's show or past shows, please go to our Cooking Without Looking YouTube channel. And please remember to like and subscribe. Mm -hmm. yeah. People are used to that. Yes, Alan, thank you. Um, okay, well, if you have, if you teach any people that are blind or visually impaired, please feel free to use our free shows to help teach all them. Um, so many people have done it already around the United States, over 70 countries. So we encourage you to uh, do that. Many teachers have done it already, and it's been very, very successful. Alan? Also, check out our Cooking Without Looking podcast on Spotify and iHeartRadio or anywhere you get your favorite podcast. We're also available on all Alexa-enabled devices. I notice how our, both our cooks used it for timers. <laughs> yes. If you'd like to change the way everyone sees blindness, the way we see blindness, please, please donate. You can do that at Vision World Foundation, or you can go to the website once again, www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. And just click on the link, link at the top uh, for, for more information. You could go use a phone and do it the old-fashioned way at 305-200-9104. Alan? Look for our next show in January. On behalf of myself, Annette Watkins, Renee Rentmeester, and Sylvia Stinson Perez, and all of us at the Cooking Without Looking TV show and Vision World Foundation, Thank you so very much for watching and bye. Bye for now. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Happy holidays, everyone. Thank you Merry so Christmas. much. Merry Christmas. <laughs>